The Sacramento Police Department has released body cam footage following the shooting of a 23 year old man by the name of Stefan Clark. He was shot and killed in his own backyard and it all happened when police were looking for an individual who was breaking into cars. They allegedly mistook Clark as the suspect and chased him into his grandmother's backyard. He was living with his grandmother at the time and believed that he had a gun when in reality he was holding his cell phone. And the two police officers fired 10 shots each, so 20 shots total. Both officers involved with the shooting were placed on paid administrative leave. Now there was a public outcry following that shooting. And so in an effort to be transparent with the community, the officers have decided or the police department has decided to release the footage. What we're about to show you is incredibly graphic. I want to make sure to give you guys that warning. But with that said, let's take a look at the first video. Hey, show me your hands. Stop, stop. My son, stop. Shots fired, stop saying go. Show me your hands! Let's see your hands! Five seven, he's down. No movement. We're gonna need additional units. Okay. It's hard to see, right? So now cops and the right wing will then use that as an excuse for what well, was hard to see, so they didn't know if he had a gun or not. If you didn't know if he had a gun or not, maybe you shouldn't have killed him. So when I see that it's hard to see, I get that the cops have a tough job. And if you're in that backyard and that guy's running, by the way, the report was that the guy had what they're calling a toolbar, presumably a crowbar, right? Um, that, what is he gonna throw it at you? Did he switch the crowbar for a gun? When did he switch that? I understand it's hard, but we can't have you executing citizens because you couldn't see. That's exactly what the problem is. So um, one of the things that we talk about a lot when these stories come up is how in a lot of cases the cops don't want to take any risk. They, they open fire immediately because that's what they're trained to do. Don't risk your own life if you have any reasonable uh, suspicion that this person might have a weapon, open fire. And that's essentially what happened here. But what follows is even more infuriating because remember, in total, they fired 20 shots, okay? The guy is on the ground, he is not moving. And just take a look at how they react and, and treat an innocent guy after they gunned him down. Again, these videos are graphic, let's go to the next one. Let's see your hands. You all right, you hit? Yeah, I'm good. All right. He was still pointing. Oh shit. When I saw again, you alright, dude? Yeah, I'm alright. I don't think I've hit or anything. Alright. I got him a gunpoint, dude. Right. You wanna what you, you wanna do? do? A tactical reload, okay? Alright, copy. I think I shot about five times. Stand by. Stand by on that. He's still down, he's not moving. We can't see the gun. Uh, we, we, we don't, we don't, we don't have it. Do you see it? I don't, I don't see it. Hey, can you hear us? If you can hear us. Can you hear us? We need to know if you're okay. We need, we need to get you medics, but we can't go over there and get you help unless we know you're, you don't have the weapon. Sir, can you move? Can you hear us? He came up and then he he kind of approached us, hands out, and then yeah, he was, fell down. Was, we can't see his left hand. Okay, I have to mention something that's important. So um, after they shot him and he fell to the ground, they of course called for backup. You could hear that in the in the surveillance, and it took about five to six minutes for backup to arrive. So for five to six minutes, he is laying there on the ground, not moving. You have not confirmed whether or not he has a weapon, right? And 
you're still, I mean, even backup, they're like, sir, can you hear? He's dead. You fired 20 shots. He's dead. He's on the ground. He hasn't moved. Can we please get the paramedics to go in there and see if they could possibly save his life? I mean, it's no, just no, crazy. No, 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 no. Look, I gotta say it. It's not that they are cowards, it's that we train them to be cowards. If I shot a guy, would I sit there for five minutes as he bled out? Even if he was a guy who barged into my house and put our lives in danger, would I just callously sit there? Well, I mean, if I approach a guy who's bleeding out, there's 1% of 1% chance that it's he's been laying a bear trap for me as his blood is oozing all over the ground. And so I'd rather not take a 1% of a 1% chance. And whereas if I rush to him and I actually put something on his wounds, maybe there's a 50% chance he lives. We've trained them to not have human reactions. The human reaction is, "Oh my God, I shot a guy. I want to make sure he doesn't die." Even if he had pointed his phone at me, which is what he was doing. Which, by the way, he wasn't. Why would he point a phone at anyone? Okay, he had a cell phone on him. But you didn't bother to check. You didn't bother to check. You just gunned him down. Can you not see why we're all upset about that? What kind of a monster doesn't get upset at that? And then to let him bleed out like that. And this is not the only case, guys. This is why we emphasize the training. Philando Castile, for all that time bleeding out, they won't get him, they won't address him, and then they handcuff him after they kill oh, them. And that's exactly what happened in this case. I do want to toss to the to the final video on this because after they finally approached his body and could see that he is not responsive, guess what they did? Take a look. Let's go. Do you guys want to go hands, cover them? Okay. Or cuff. Waistband? Yeah, we'll just start shooting. All right, all right. Hey, man. We're going to need uh, CPR stuff. Look, it's part of the training, man. Uh, if a guy's there fighting for his life, dying right in front of you, do not be human. Be absolutely afraid, 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 afraid. Handcuff a guy who's bleeding out. I've now shown dozens of videos on the Young Turks of cops handcuffing people who are bleeding to death. Why? Oh, I don't want to take any risk. I don't want to take any risk. What am I, a cop? What do I have? Weaponry all over me? I got a taser. I got a gun. I got a shotgun. I got everything. I got 8,000 backup. But no, I don't want to take 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% risk that the guy bleeding to death in front of me might actually scratch me or something because I see his phone. You see in the video, his phone is right there. There was no gun, it was a phone. Who cares about his life? His life means nothing. We have been trained to be cowards, so we're gonna handcuff that guy bleeding to death. That's not our cops. That's not our cops. You know their slogan uh, and all across the country is, better to be judged by 12 than carried out by six. In other words, Execute them, who cares? We never get called to account. Those jurors always let us off. Better to be judged by 12 than carried out by six. Let's all train to be cowards and never actually have the courage to say, wait, it's dark. Is that a gun or a crowbar or a phone? No, we train them, just murder the guy, let him bleed out because your life is a billion times more important than a citizen's life. Well, then that's not our cops. It's just a paramilitary force meant to occupy us. Not interested in that. We should elect prosecutors across the country, DAs like Larry Krasner in Philadelphia, and we should root out this injustice against all of us so they stop murdering us. You're not here to protect and serve us, you're here to protect and serve yourself. It's plain as day in that video. Stop teaching the cops that they need to be cowards. If you become a member of the Young Turks, you'll be saying, you know, I'm like a smart person. So do it right now, tytnetwork.com slash join, get the whole Young Turks show every day.